What's up guys, I'm Newbie Dave and welcome to the Weekend Update. Let's get started. How's it going everybody? Hope you're having a fantastic week. Now I gotta say, I am very disappointed in every single one of you, especially those of you who download my game files every week and play on the same world as me. A couple of weeks ago, I built this honey farm, and I mentioned at the time that I wish I had some moss carpet to cover the hoppers with, and because I didn't, I just used some green carpet instead, and said I'd keep my eye out for a wandering trader who was selling moss blocks so I could bone meal it and get some moss carpet. But it turns out that I did have some moss blocks. I looked for the moss up here in my organics chest and I didn't find any. I checked my grass chest, there wasn't any in there. And there, there's some in here now because obviously I found some, but it was actually hiding out in my crafting chest over here. I don't know why I put it over here, but I didn't think to look there for it. And it was there, I had it all along, didn't have to waste my time with the green carpet. And I am very disappointed that none of you caught it. It's not my fault, there's only one of me. There's like 2,000 of you guys. Somebody should have picked up on it and said something in the comments but I'll let it slide this time. On to today's episode. As I mentioned last week, we are getting ready for the dragon fight. I realize it's been about 20 episodes and I haven't done anything to prep for the dragon fight. And this is around the time that I like to start getting ready for that. So last time we went and mined for some ancient debris, we upgraded all of our gear to netherite. Now I gotta warn you, in between episodes I did some mining for diamonds, I came back, put my gear up, logged out, came back later, logged back in, and my netherite gear was gone. All of my armor and my sword, everything that was on the armor stand was gone. My other netherite gear that I had in my inventory, still there, but what was on the armor stand, for some reason, it just disappeared it didn't exist anymore i checked my chest i checked everywhere couldn't find it so i had to restore a backup of the game to get it back and i don't think i'm going to be locking out with my netherite gear on an armor stand anymore so you know fyi in case you uh, are worried about that you might want to keep your valuable stuff in your inventory so really the last thing that I feel like I need to do before we start getting ready to actually go fight the dragon is to work on some potions. There are certain potions that are really, really helpful to have during the dragon fight. Uh, if you can get some of the uh, phantom membrane, you can make some slow falling potions. But even without that, you can make some strength potions, some regen potions, some health potions, all kinds of uh, useful potions that will really give you the edge in the dragon fight. Now last season I made this really nice potion vending machine where you just go and push the buttons of the things that you want, the ingredients that you want to mix together and out come these potions. I do want to do something like that again in this world, but right now I just need something quick and easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw together a quick sort of semi-auto brewing stand because just manually adding the ingredients and then waiting for it to brew and then adding the next ingredient and waiting for it to brew is kind of boring and tiresome. So this is just something to kind of make the process go a little bit faster until we have our big auto potion machine. So technically all you need to make potions is a brewing stand. The, the hoppers and chests are what's going to help automate this to some degree. And then here's all of our different potion making ingredients that we can use for this. So since this is going to be pretty small and hopefully pretty temporary, I'm just going to throw it right here behind my stairs. So I'm going to get rid of this grass and I'm going to do upside down stair there, upside down stair there and we'll do a slab there then the brewing stand can go on top and then on the side we're going to do a hopper going into the brewing stand and on top we'll do a hopper going into the brewing stand and so this is where we're going to put the ingredients we don't really need a chest or a big hopper system up top because for a single potion the most ingredients you're going to need is maybe three i, don't, I can't think of any potions that need more than three ingredients but we do want a chest on this one because this is where we're going to put all of our water bottles. And so the water bottles will get sucked up into the hopper and then they'll get put into the brewing stand. So when we make a potion, we can take the potion out and it will automatically refill with new water bottles. And this other chest is just going to be where we put all of our ingredients. So now I can get all of these things and throw them into their respective chests. So we'll put all of the ingredients in the chest on the right here. Um, I've done enough potion making that for the most part I remember the ingredients that I need to make all of these But the nice thing about the potion machine that I made in season one was everything was labeled And so if you want to make a strength potion You didn't have to remember what ingredient you was you just went and looked for the one that says strength and push the button 
But for now, I'm only gonna put the ingredients in here for the things that I really care about, like magma cream to get some fire resistance, sugar for speed, uh, blaze powder for strength. And so this will be the ingredients chest. I'm gonna throw some blaze powder in here so we can get some potions going. And I'm gonna dig out right below the slab there and put in some water. And that way we can refill all of, all of our uh, glass bottles here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill up all these glass bottles and throw them into the chest on the right. And now as you can see, it automatically loaded up the brewing stand. So now when we brew some potions, when we're done, we'll pop these out. These will be our potions, use your imagination for a sec. And then they get reloaded with new water bottles. So to go ahead and test this thing out, I'm gonna go ahead and make, uh, let's see, I'll make a speed potion because I love me some speed potions and I'm gonna use some glowstone dust um, no, I'm going to use some redstone dust. I want to extend the duration of the potion, whereas the glowstone dust would enhance the effect, make it stronger. So to do this, you want to drop your ingredients into the hopper, and it's very important that you add them in the order that they need to be used. So I'm going to add the nether wart first, then the sugar, then the redstone dust, and now we can just walk our way and go about our business, and after a minute or two, everything should be done, and we can come back and get our potions. And I think I just heard the third ingredient brew up, so we should check. And there is our three potions of swiftness with eight minutes. So we'll take these out and now it's ready to go again. So there you have it, a nice compact semi-auto brewing station. We've got our uh, water bottles on the left. We've got our ingredients on the right. And the most important thing here is just make sure that you add the ingredients in the order that they need to be used and they'll get pulled out one at a time. Now, don't worry because today's episode is a twofer. We're gonna get two builds in one episode today because that brewing stand, it was kind of a short build. And honestly, I don't have a whole lot of nether wart and brewing takes a lot of nether wart. Plus, I discovered last season that I really, really like uh, the red nether bricks. They look really good in builds, especially when mixing them with just the regular nether bricks. And those re require lots and lots of nether wart. So we're also going to build ourselves a little nether wart farm today. Really all you need to grow nether wart is some soul sand and just nether wart. The nether wart has to be planted in the soul sand. It will slowly grow. There's nothing that you can do to speed it up. You can't bone meal it. It doesn't matter what light level you use. Doesn't matter what biome. It's just gonna take its time. But all you need is the nether wart and soul sand and you've got yourself a nether wart farm. Everything else in here is just gonna be used for decoration. So I decided that this would be a pretty good spot to build this. It's not gonna be huge and it's very nethery. And so I thought putting it next to the nether portal would be a good idea rather than putting it in my base and having all of this red yucky nether type stuff in the middle of my nice beautiful base over there. Get out of here, piglin, we don't need you. Yes, I'm beating you with a shovel. So I'm going to line this thing up with my nether portal. So we'll start uh, right about here and I'm going to make it eight blocks wide. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight over there somewhere. So in the middle of this, I'm going to use these nether wart blocks. I think these look absolutely beautiful. You can just get these from any of the crimson fungus in the nether. And since my nether portal comes out in a crimson forest biome, this stuff was very easy to get. Now this is actually gonna be the divider. So I'm gonna put some of these uh, nether brick fences on top of that. And then we're going to have some soul sand growing nether wart on each side of this. So I'm gonna do eight by two because like I said, the nether wart grows kind of slow and there's no way to speed it up. And so I wanna make this farm a little bit bigger than I did in the previous season so I can get lots and lots of nether wart. I also think having it out in the open like this, I'm more likely to walk by and see that, oh look, the nether wart is ready to harvest. Whereas last time it was up on top of a build where you couldn't see it and so I only went up to check on it when I was thinking about it and I just didn't think about it very much. Now around this, I wanna use some of these polished blackstone brick slabs. You could also just use polished blackstone bricks. Uh, Anytime I can, I prefer to use slabs just because you get more bang for your buck with them. So I'm gonna do slabs going all the way around like this where I can in the ground. And then on the other side here, um, yeah, I'm gonna do slabs all the way around because I'm gonna surround this thing with dirt. And so you're not actually gonna be able to see the slabs. You know, there's gonna be dirt which will grow into grass uh, around this when I'm done. In the middle here, I'm gonna do double slab and then we'll put slabs on each side of that. And we'll do the same thing over here. Now this part might be a little tricky. We're gonna go up with some iron bars. I'm gonna go up, let's see, one, two, 
and I think I'm gonna do three. So we'll go up three like that. And then on top of this, I'm actually gonna put another block of soul sand. And then I'm going to do some of these black stone slabs on the bottom of that going all the way across. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. We'll do three iron bars going up and then soul sand. And then I'm gonna do one more slab on the edges like this to create this sort of stair step going down. Now the reason I'm using soul sand up here is because I'm gonna light these suckers and get that really awesome blue flame going. And then I'm gonna surround both of those with spruce trap doors so you don't actually see the soul sand. And now that I look at this, I don't like the iron bars directly under the soul sand. Uh, I'm gonna replace those with these polished blackstone brick walls. There we go, that's looking good. Now I am gonna use the rest of these iron bars across the middle like this. And then somewhere in the middle, uh, and this thing's kind of eight blocks wide, so there's not, it's hard to find like a third, but somewhere around a third of the way across, I'm gonna do a chain right there and a chain right there. And then we'll hang a soul lantern, which looks pretty good, but I think I made this thing too short. <laughs> it needs to be one block higher because uh, those lanterns are basically sitting on the fence. So let me raise this whole thing up by one, one block. So there we go, raise it up. That looks a little bit better. You could probably even go up another block or two in height if you wanted. Uh, maybe even add a little bit longer chain, but I'm pretty happy with that. The soul lanterns, they're not really for lighting. They don't provide a very much light. It's really just for the look. I, I don't care about this being lit up all the time. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time over here and <laughs> there's gonna be spawns in this area. So yeah, there's our little nether wart farm. We should be able to get 32 nether wart from this thing when it's fully grown. And actually we'll get more than that because every time you harvest one of these things when they're fully grown, I think you get somewhere between like two to four nether wart. So we should get tons and tons of nether wart for, for this. If you wanted, you can make it even bigger. Uh, you can make it 64, double the length, whatever, it's up to you. All right, I think that's gonna take care of things today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we got our brewing sand back there. I'll go ahead and start brewing up some potions for the dragon fight. And we've got our nether farm in the back so that we'll have plenty of nether wart for brewing as well as making some redstone bricks. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, please hit that like button. And while you're down there, feel free to subscribe so you'll get notified of future episodes as they come out. Thanks y'all and have a great day.